Welcome to the Cinemagraph Part 2, The Fun Stuff. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. This is a community built to help you guys get better at Photoshop and photography. Today we're doing a Cinemagraph, which is kind of like photography and video combined into one and uh, making awesome. You guys have probably seen these all over the internet. It's basically where one part of the uh, movie or photo or it's like a mixture between the two. <laughs> one part of it uh, moves around and the rest of the screen basically stays still. Um, and you can use these as animated GIFs, which means you can put them on websites and things like that. And they don't have to like, you don't have to hit play for a movie. It's trying to just always plays. So I'm gonna show you guys how to take a movie file and kind of bring it together and create an animated GIF out of it. It's gonna be really cool and I think you guys are gonna learn a ton. So basically we have our movie that we shot in part one and I just brought this into Photoshop. Now I'm using Photoshop CS6 extended, which does give me video editing capability. Uh, CS5 extended also has video editing and things like that. Um, if you guys use, are using a different version of Photoshop, like CS2 not extended, you guys are not going to be able to up, uh, edit video, unfortunately. So this might be worth uh, doing like an upgrade if you wanted to do that, or you could um, like download a trial version. Um, so basically when you bring it in, it's going to bring up your timeline and you can see here is our timeline of like a short little video that we made. And this is just uh, recording, you know, what, what's going on with the bubbles. So the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to zoom in using my little slider to my animation. And I want to figure out about where the start is. There we go. That's about where the start, where there are no bubbles. So I'm going to take this end here and kind of bring it over to that line. And that's going to trim it and automatically move it. So now my starting point is like right before the bubbles. Then we're going to go to our end point, And this is where I want to be all the way here. There we go. And this will be when the bubbles last leave the screen. So I'm going to bring my endpoint now, and we're going to take this and drag that in as well. There we go. Okay, so we have from start to finish, you can see we have this is our animation. Now, if that's all you wanted, like if you didn't mind the movement and things like that, that wouldn't be bad. You could just leave it at this. Um, but what we want to do is we want to take this a step further, and we want to figure out exactly where those bubbles are moving, and then we want the rest of the photo to stay still, and we're going to do some cool stuff with coloring it. Okay, so I'm going to make a new layer on top of everything. Let's just bring this layer over here, and we're going to start off with these bubbles, and I'm going to go in with my brush tool. You don't have to do this uh, the same way that I'm going to do this. Um, this is just the way that I... I found that was uh, relatively easy for me to do. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my brush tool and I'm on a new layer and I'm basically gonna paint over and you don't have to do every frame, but keep in mind, you know, the more accurate you are with this, the better. Um, paint over about where these bubbles are going. And you're gonna be able to use this as like a layer mask in just a little bit to define where a layer will and will not be visible. And that's gonna help you um, tell these bubbles, you know, just be, just be visible where, where the bubbles are. And again, you don't have to go every frame, but getting an idea like this, will be, it, it'll help you relatively roughly get everything out. Um, because you want to be able to get a decent selection out of this area, and it will help the rest of the cinemagraph just look a little bit more consistent. Okay, so I'm not doing anything special on this layer. Like literally, I just grabbed a brush tool, and I'm just, uh, I'm painting around where I saw that, you know, there are bubbles moving in the, in that area. Oh, I hit the space bar then. There we go. I hit that on accident. All right. There we go. And we're almost done. See, that's the trail of that other bubble up there. You want to make sure you include the trail. Okay. And we're almost done. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And we're gonna go, you know, all the way to the end there. And our little bubble friend, we're gonna just kind of follow up along there. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is just gonna make sure, you know, it, it tracks basically the the progress of your bubble. So that's that's the progress of our of our bubbles there. And we want to include you. There we go. So now what should happen is as I go through this, I shouldn't really be able to see any. Um, any bubbles like I should have basically covered it all up and right here there is like a little bit of 
spit or bubble spit whatever <laughs> it's kind of cool like that's the actual path of the bubble okay so what do we do with this um basically with this now we can take our selection here and we can turn this sorry we can take all of this um there we go it's done now we can take everything that we just created and make a selection out of it so i'm going to make this layer invisible we're going to go to the end here and this is going to be what we actually want to use of the of the cinemagraph so here at the very end i'm going to hit there we go stop going there we go i'm going to hit shift option command and to make a new layer and then shift option command e and that's going to make a stamp visible layer and then we're going to bring this stamp visible layer way over there the reason i'm doing this is because we need a part of the image to stay still and so making a stamp visible layer this layer is not animated so it's just going to appear still for the entire thing all right this is a pretty complex tutorial so i hope you guys are doing all right um going through it and um, if you need to watch it over to go in uh feel free to do that <laughs> you have my permission there we go let's just turn this back visible and now we can see what's going on with this layer so you can see this layer down here is animated this layer is not and this layer is uh just where we painted so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this layer into a selection i'm going to do that by holding command and clicking on that so we have this layer as a selection now let's click on the layer that we the stamp visible layer we created and click on our uh click on our uh, layer mask and then we have um a layer mask that is basically just that area not being visible so you can see it's actually done the opposite of what we want it's made the bubbles go away but the rest of our image is exactly the same so we're going to click on our layer mask it just made the wrong layer mask like it made white on black and we need black on white so click on your layer mask and hit command i and then now we have our bubbles and you can see it's only the only part that's visible is exactly the area where you have your actual bubbles which is very very cool let's just zoom out this i don't actually need this layer anymore so i'm going to click and drag this to the trash can and you can see like the layer that's over here is also um, shown down there in the timeline so it's the same layers it's not like two you're working with two separate things it's just this is the animation of the layers that are up there all right so there we have our cinemagraph with basically everything standing still now one thing that we don't have in this is you can see here this is not really a huge deal um but that little magic wand moved a couple times during during the actual creation of this um to, the easiest way to do that is honestly just to take this and kind of like layer mask this area out so we're going to just make sure that the layer the magic wand doesn't move as well and there we go you have everything else moving except for your magic wand all right let's just zoom out and oh, put that right over there okay cool so now we have everything moving except for the magic wand now the cool thing about a cinemagraph is you can treat it just like a regular image um meaning you can do like color toning so that's what we're going to do i'm going to grab an adjustment layer and we're going to choose levels and let's go over here to our blue channel and i'm going to pull up some of the blues and put some yellows in there as well so you can see like we can color tone this just as just as we want i'm going to put some greens in the shadows as well let's grab a curves adjustment layer now and kind of bring down the um there we go bring down the brightness and then i'm going to make a selection around this area here and invert that let's just put a gaussian blur on that as well so you can treat this just like it's a regular image doing the same you know types of finishing things that you would do on your image so you can go from just you know a regular snapshot looking to more of an image like this all right and you can see those those get applied throughout the entire cinemagraph which is great okay so we have our cinemagraph it's well, it looks awesome now how do we actually save it well we want to go to file and we're going to go to save for web shift option command s now what you want to do let's just go ahead and zo zoom out there you don't want this to be jpeg you want to change this guy from jpeg to gif and that's going to actually let you animate it so a gif will be animated on the internet um, a jpeg will not be so um, if you're having any trouble with uh, getting something to animate make sure it's in a gif format and it's going to take a little while this is like it's a pretty large image and it's just going to take a little while for it to think all right so this is basically its best idea of what's going on here um 
let's take the transparency off. You can tell it how much colors you want on here and um, a couple different options. I'm gonna choose the best option here um, to make it look good. <laughs> let's just choose this to be perceptual. That's gonna change, basically a GIF only allows a certain amount of colors. So it has to like change uh, different, it has different uh, ways to figure out what colors to put where. All right, set perceptual and let's set that to noise. I'm gonna turn transparency back on. All right, and our colors at 256 is, that's the highest you can go, unfortunately, is 256. I wish you actually could go a bit higher than 256, and then you could get a little bit better, you know, resolution in your image, but unfortunately, that's as, that's as good as you can go with the, with the GIFs. All right, and in a second, the most important thing that we do when we're creating these cinemagraphs, whenever this loads, is make sure there's an option at the bottom here to click uh, for looping options. You want to make sure that says forever. Um, if it says once, it's just going to play through and then it's going to stop. And you want to make sure it says forever so it'll continue to loop back and back and back and back. All right, so let's just change this from once to forever. And then you can hit play and you can kind of see, you get a little preview of what's going on in your image itself. All right, there we go and we're gonna go ahead and hit stop and then we're going to save it. So the the detail in here, let's just zoom in to about 50%. It doesn't really look that great, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, well, you can't, I'm trying to figure out how to make it look a little bit better. Maybe we can click on interlace. Sometimes with these options, it depends a lot on what type of image you're working on, on what this is actually gonna wind up looking like. Um, and changing your different options up here is um, it's gonna take a little while between them, but I do want this to look a little bit better than it does. All right, so we just played around with a couple of the settings. It kind of took a little while to uh, for the computer to think, so I'm gonna go and show you guys what we did. I just changed this to adaptive, and basically with every one of these cinemagraphs or any kind of GIF, you're just gonna kind of wanna go through these and see which one works the best. In this case, adaptive seemed to work best and noise, and you can see it looks quite a, better, uh, quite a bit better there. Um, you wanna make sure you're zooming into 100% to get your preview because it's gonna look different when you're not at 100%. And in, in most cases, it's gonna look worse. Um, so we want to make sure we have this checked on forever and then I'm gonna hit save there we go and let's just go ahead and put this here in our folder we're gonna put this in cinemagraph 2 and then we're gonna view it on the internet all right cinemagraph there we go dot gif and we're gonna save so to actually view it, if you're using a Mac or a PC, um, you can't really view GIFs in, well, you can't on a Mac, maybe you can on a PC, but you can't view them natively. It's not gonna like actually animate. So you wanna be sure you view it on uh, like a web program. Like I use Google Chrome, but you could use Safari or Internet Explorer, whatever you wanted to. All right, so it's saving now. You can see this stuff does take forever because it's like, it's actually rendering out like a video, it's rendering out quite a few different frames. It's not just like sharing, saving just what you see. It's, you know, in this case there are 35 frames, so it's saving out 35 different versions of the same thing and then sticking them all back together. Um, so that's why it just kind of takes a long time to do all this. All right, let's see if this works. So we're gonna load that up in Chrome and we can see this looks awesome. We have the bubbles and they're just gonna go continue. See, I'm not even touching anything. They're just gonna keep on going forever and ever and ever. And uh, I think this is awesome. So now you guys have the tools to create your own cinema graphs. I wanna see you guys do it because all you need is a camera with the video setting. You can even use your iPhone and Photoshop. You can select that area out basically, choose to not animate that and the rest is history. And you've got something that's awesome. It's gonna move forever as you go along through your life. You're gonna look back at this photo. It's like those Harry Potter photos that, you know, the people move in them, except they don't have their own thoughts and they don't live in their own worlds. But um, other than that, it's just like Harry Potter. I hope you enjoyed watching this two-part tutorial on Cinemagraphs. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll learn you guys later. Bye everyone. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. That was nice, Aaron. Good job. Guys, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that, guys. <laughs>